Okay, so PHP, PHP is one of these um, self-referential acronyms. It stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. So the word PHP is part of the abbreviation that it stands for, which is part of the abbreviations which it stands for, et cetera. All right. Another one of those is the GNU project, GNU, which stands for GNU's Not Unix. Once again, self-referential acronyms. And so these are the guys that started it up. Um, Mostly a bunch of Israelis um, just had this cool idea, and it just caught on. The beauty of open source uh, technology. Okay. So what we mean by hypertext preprocessor. So hypertext is the stuff, HTML stuff. You I'm sure you have seen this. Um, if you haven't ever seen this, then you may be in the wrong place, because this is about web author. All right. So here you have a typical uh, some file.php instead of a file, usually would have a file dot, dot .html or dot .htm, and it would contain all these um, HTML tags. And then inside, it has this little funny special tag, brackets, question mark, PHP, and a bunch of PHP code. So you put this on your website, and this, this is not going to work unless your server is looking for it. So if you put this file on your just hard drive and try to browse the file on your hard drive, unless you've got your own little Apache server set up on your computer, this is not going to work. You've got to have your web server configured so it recognizes the PHP extension. So here's what's going to happen. All right. So the web server software, we typically people use a, a software program called Apache to do this kind of stuff. All right. The web server software is going to conclude a PHP module. In other words, the, so the software knows how to recognize PHP, and it executes your code. So this is what we call a script. A script. It executes the code, and the results get thrown out. So um, what's happening here is that your user, who's actually looking at this on their browser, all they see is pure HTML. They never see your PHP code. And this is useful because if anybody's had the experience of writing code that works on some browsers and it doesn't work on other browsers. Rather, these kind of cross-browser compatibility problems. Well, one of the ways of fixing that is to move all your code back to the server, where you only have one server, so you don't have any compatibility issues. And so what the browser sees is just pure HTML code. Uh, so that's one, one time when you want to do it. The other time when you have to do it is when the result that your user is going to see depends on some kind of calculation that has to be done at the server. So for example, you've got a schedule of activities and for your organization. And so what the user sees is a little calendar. And then they click on one day in the calendar and they get a list of all the events that are happening on that day. Well, what's going to happen there? Well, what's going to happen is you've got to have a database back on your server that knows all the events. And so you have to wait for the user to tell you what day they're interested in. And then you have to do some calculations on the server, basically a database lookup, and you've got to spit out the results. So anytime you're, you're working with some kind of database application, where you're storing information on, on the server in a database, then you're going to want to use some kind of programming language. And my experience of all the many different programming languages that you can use, PHP is one of the easiest and quickest to actually get stuff done. Uh, and we're interested in it for for itself, and also because it's the foundation of a number of other very useful technologies, in particular WordPress. Um, WordPress is based on PHP, so if you're learning WordPress, as I am, then you'll want to know a little bit of PHP so you understand what the foundation of this is. Okay? So um, one of the very interesting things about, you know, about PHP is it has some a lot of really interesting built-in stuff, and there's a um, a special little PHP function that you can call that does essentially a, a kind of a status configuration dump. So the, uh, the code for this page, the code for this page right here that does all this stuff, it puts out several lines of status information, is a single line of code which calls a single PHP function, the PHP information function, and just dumps all this stuff out. And this is really useful because this is what tells you your configuration. Now, Looking at this, you can tell that there is some, there are some configuration issues involved. If you, if you actually look at this stuff, you'll see that there's various types of 
kind of sub-modules that are programmed into these things, right? XPM, FTP, YP, right? all kinds of stuff that you could, that you have to kind of configure into here. So what I, the way I um, did this was I used a, um, a built-in kind of prepackaged um, system called uh, XAMP with a bunch of German kids built this thing. And it's just a prepackaged a pre module that has the Apache web server, it has the I, MySQL database server, and it has the um, PHP module all together. And it's just a, a five minute installation, just go, just go look up, uh, you know, download XAMP, right? Um, I think it's, and so uh, it's called, the guys call themselves, or guys and girls call themselves Apache friends, which I think is kind of cool, right? So, it's, so there's a lot of configuration, but you can get very easily started. If you just want to get started, use the XAMP distribution. Okay, so a lot of what we're going to do, almost in fact, almost all the time you're, going, you're using PHP, there's probably going to be a database involved someplace. All right? Typically, uh, we use the MySQL database. It work, it's open source, works extremely well with PHP, but there are, are interfaces to all other kinds of database products. Okay, so uh, here's a kind of canonical example where you've got a, your catalog and your user is interested in red shoes. All right, so that means that means that the user has to make what we call a request. So the formal structure of the HTTP protocol, the way that web uh, servers talk to web clients, is the web client, the browser, sends a request, and then the server sends a response. And that request, in this particular case, contains what we call request variables. So when you're, this is what you would do, you fill out a form and you click the submit button. And all the information that you fill out in the form is, the, is called request variables. So what you can have, PHP will snag those request variables and say, okay, the um, user wants to see shoes of color red. And it'll, do, it'll compose a database query using the SQL programming language, right? And then it'll look up, it will look up in the database, that's the downward, the downward uh, pointing green arrow is where your PHP code is going to the database. And it's sending it an SQL query saying, give me some information from the database. And then what comes back is the, whatever the results are. And then it's the PHP's job to take the results, which is just raw information. The results are raw information from the database. And so the PHP is going to format that as a nice little formatted table. Uh, and you would use CSS to do the format. Now, let me stop at this point and emphasize that I I'm, I'm find myself throwing a lot of acronyms around because I'm used to talking to computer programming students. So let me know if I need to kind of tone down the tech language a little bit. Uh, just let, leave out all these things, all right? And, don't, and please don't be shy saying, what the heck is SQL, all right? So S, uh, SQL is the language that you use to talk to databases with. And could you just give a, a brief overview of like what CSS is? Or what? Okay, CSS is the language that you use to put styles on, all right? HTML is the language that you use to put the content. This is a table. This is the table. It has, this is the table that has three rows, and each row has two columns. And the content of the first row is item number 3385. That's all HTML. And then CSS is, this table is colored pink. And it has a certain font size, and it has certain margins, and certain borders, and things like that. So we've, uh, div we've divided, um, divide our, we divide our web uh, structure up into several different languages. So we saw what we call PHP, that's the server side scripting language. That's where we do the calculations on the server. And when you're, when you're designing this stuff, you have to, you have to think, okay, what's gonna happen on the server, and what's gonna happen right on, on the user's machine right there, okay? So basically you have my, all of your information inside of a MySQL database, and PHP pulls that information, and it spits it out into HTML, and that, then CSS styles it. Exactly. So the user is going, going to be controlling the whole process by sending you request variables. These request variables are going to be what the user puts in their form or even links that they click, information that you get from the user. And so the PHP, its job is to talk to the database and get the information out of the database and then to compose that information into a nicely formatted uh, response page. So all the user says, sees is this nicely formatted table. Okay. So please stop me if it's, it's no fun to sit here and, and listen to blah, 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 right? So this combination, PHP and MySQL, is really pop popular. They work extremely well together, and it's very easy to do.